In this video, I'm going to perform a simple experiment to discover the dual ISO for the Nikon Z6 III. But first I'm going to explain what dual gain ISO is and why it's useful. Most modern sensors have two distinct levels of gain that can be applied to exposures. Gain means simply increasing or amplifying the signal captured, which increases its brightness. Gain is always being applied by the sensor, even at base ISO. The ISO level just determines how much of the gain is applied. So why do modern sensors have two distinct levels of gain, and why are they associated with ISO? To answer that, I'll use a simple analogy. Have you ever tried to weigh a postal letter on a human scale, or weigh a human on a postal scale? Hopefully not. A human scale is designed to handle a large amount of weight at the expense of precision for very small differences in weight. In contrast, a postal scale is designed to measure very small differences in weight at the expense of not being able to handle heavy items like people. Each type of scale, then, is optimized to handle a different range of weight, providing the precision appropriate for each. Dual gain ISO on image sensors is roughly the same concept. When light is abundant, for example in a daytime photo, the sensor uses the equivalent of a human scale. It applies what's called a low conversion gain to the electrical charge induced on the image sensor when light is exposed to it so that the conversion from the analog charge to the digital values in your RAW file and JPEGs is multiplied by a small factor. That allows the sensor to digitally represent the large quantity of light without overflowing the values from the gain applied. The downside to this low conversion gain is that, like the human scale, it loses some precision in describing tiny differences in weight or brightness at the very low light levels that exist in deep shadow. When light is scarce, for example in a nighttime photo, or when using a very fast shutter speed or small aperture, the sensor uses the equivalent of the postal scale. It applies what's called a high conversion gain to the smaller electrical charge induced on the image sensor when the scarce light is exposed to it, so that the conversion from the analog charge to the digital values has more precision for the small differences in brightness seen in low light situations. There is less risk of overflowing from this greater amplification because the accumulated charge in low light is much less than that of the daytime photo. Now that we have a good understanding of dual ISO gain, let's now turn to how we can determine the dual ISO gain level. Here's the method I used on the Nikon Z6 III, which can be applied to any camera. I set up an indoor test scene with both normal tones and deep shadows. I first metered so that it properly exposes the mid-tones at ISO 100 then adjusted the shutter speed to underexpose the scene by 7 stops. Here's what that looks like, basically almost completely dark. I then shot a sequence of photos with that same aperture and shutter speed, but with the ISO increasing by a third stop in each photo. I did this until I reached ISO 12800, which is 7 stops of ISO above our starting point, which yields an image with a brightness equal to what would be considered proper exposure. I then pulled all the RAWs into Photoshop and adjusted the exposure and post so that each has the same brightness as the normally exposed image. For the ISO image, that means increasing the brightness in Photoshop by 7 stops. For the ISO 125 image, it means increasing it by 6 and 2 thirds stops. For ISO 160, by 6 and 1 third stops. And so on, until we reach the ISO 12800 image, where no brightness adjustment in post is necessary. Because every photo was shot with the same exposure and shutter speed, they all have the same physical exposure to light and thus the same amount of naturally occurring photon noise, which is the predominant source of noise in most photographs. What's different between each photo is the amount of noise introduced during the conversion gain of the ISO, since ISO is the one setting we're changing. Aside from matching the exposure, I've also zeroed out all the ACR settings and disabled both chrominance and luminance noise reduction. I've loaded all 22 of the process photos as layers into a single Photoshop document so that we can quickly walk between each exposure. I'll zoom in at 100% on the shadow portion of my scene so that we can evaluate the noise more closely. This is our base exposure at ISO 100, underexposed by 7 stops. This is ISO 125. Noise looks about the same. ISO 160, 200, 250, 320, 400, still no difference in noise. ISO 500, 640, 800. Wow, did you see that? That's an enormous drop in shadow noise between ISO 640 and 800. ISO 800 is clearly the dual ISO conversion gain point on the Z63. Let's walk the remainder of ISOs just to make sure this sensor doesn't have a third conversion gain. ISO 1000, 1250, 1600, 2000, 2500, 3200, 
4,000? 5,000? 6,400? 8,000? 10,000? And finally, ISO 12,800. Okay, so no additional conversion gains. Did you notice how the noise levels didn't change for any of the ISOs between 800 and 12,800? The same as how the noise didn't change for any of the ISOs between 100 and 640? This is a good demonstration of how noise does not correlate with increasing ISO, contrary to what you might think from your experience shooting cameras at higher ISOs. Surely ISO 12800 is noisier than ISO 800. Nope, exactly the same. You see, it's not the increased ISO that causes additional noise in photographs, but the lower exposure inferred by the use of the higher ISO. When you shoot ISO 12800, it's because there isn't enough light in the scene to produce the output brightness you want. And it's the lower amount of light reaching the sensor that causes the increase in noise, not the ISO you apply to that lower light to make it brighter. In other words, ISO noise is really just a proxy for noise associated with different levels of light exposure. So for the Z63, the dual gain ISO starts at 800. Should you then shoot all your photos at ISO 800 or above? No. And for the reason just described, noise is a function of exposure, not ISO. But we also just discovered the higher conversion gain that starts at ISO 800 produces lower shadow noise, so wouldn't that be the reason to use ISO 800? It would, except for the fact that to accommodate ISO 800, you have to use a faster shutter speed or smaller aperture to produce a lower exposure so that the extra gain from ISO 800 doesn't increase the brightness of your photo beyond a highlight clipping. Between the two possible sources of extra noise, one being the higher noise from a lower conversion gain below ISO 800, and the other higher noise from using a faster shutter speed or smaller aperture to accommodate the dual gain ISO at 800, it's the latter that produces much more noise because noise from low light is significantly greater than the extra noise from the lower conversion gain at ISO 100. So use ISO 100 when the scene warrants, but keep an eye to switching to ISO 800 as quickly as possible for scenes where the light levels start dropping to the point where your exposure can accommodate the extra gain from ISO 800 and above. For video shooters, the conversion gain for photos at ISO 800 corresponds to an N-Log ISO of 6400. This is because N-Log applies a combination of analog and digital gain to exposures for video, and the analog portion of that gain is equal to the sensor ISO three stops below the ISO you set in the camera. That means N-Log ISO 800 is really sensor ISO 100, and N-Log ISO 6400 is actually sensor ISO 800. I plan a future video to discuss how N-Log handles ISO and exposure. Before I end this video, wouldn't it be great if cameras could apply both conversion gains to the same exposure so that it uses the lower conversion gain for the midtones and highlights and the higher conversion gain for the shadows? That would provide the best of both gains, the lower conversion gain to handle the large quantities of light for the bright parts of the scene without amplifying those tones beyond clipping, and a higher conversion gain for the darker parts of the scene, giving us greater precision for the smaller differences in light levels inside the shadows and thus less shadow noise. In fact, there are sensors which already do this, such as the Micro Four Thirds sensor in the Panasonic GH6, GH7, and G92. Hopefully that technology will make its way to full-frame sensors soon. Until then, I'd like to show you a simulation of what that improvement would look like. I've written experimental software that allows two raw images to be merged into one. It graphs the lower five stops from one photograph onto the remaining stops from another photograph, simulating a dual ISO gain readout. To test the software, I then shot a high dynamic range scene with my Nikon Z8, first at ISO 64 and again at ISO 500, which is the Z8's dual gain ISO. I then merged the two exposures together using my software. Here's a comparison of that merged shot versus only the ISO 64 image, both with their deep shadows lifted in post. Notice the significant reduction in shadow noise for the simulated dual ISO readout image. It's similar to the benefit you get from bracketing, but without the risk of movement between two separate bracketed exposures.